Welcome to our first interview from the train station. This one is with Darren O'Brien of our Reddit Private Messages. Thank you for your time, Darren. Darren O'Brien started making music back in about 2002 or 2003, but it was a relatively short-lived thing. He was using Reason then, and it was less than intuitive to learn in, to the point he was thinking making music just wasn't meant to be something achievable for him. But he was wrong. He came back to making music in about 2014, when his wife had her first child and he needed something for himself to just get away and transport to another place. So he decided to give it another try. The stuff he was creating for the first 4 years or so was really awful he said. But he kept going and now he feels he is at a compassivity level and yes he can make great trans tracks. He started DJing back in about 1996, when he was 16 or 17 years old. The addition of producing was really something that came a bit later to some degree. If you are not producing your own music, you are not going to get booked for gigs. But also, as it gives him somewhere to escape for a few hours, sometimes a week and try to be creative. Technically he started making music back in when he was 22 years old. But really he said, I didn't take it serious. He didn't take it serious until he was 34 years young. What kind of equipment did he use at the beginning? At the beginning it was just a desktop computer. He didn't even have a set of monitors and laptops were pretty weak and expensive back then. Now he doesn't use too much more, only with more power. He does have an MDI keyboard audio interface with monitors and an NI sampler machine. From a software point of view, his DIY of choice is of course FL Studio and some plugins he uses a lot of things. So then to name two of them are Spire and Nexus and of course the pads. And he uses a laptop with an i7 processor from Intel today and he has 46GB of RAM. That is a lot man. What was your last event and how much gigs did you have before the year of the pandemic? He didn't gig too much although he loves to do more. He only plays 4 or 5 times a year and with a full time job and a family he will never be gigging all the time. He is not trying to make it as a full time DJ but he would love to get into the point where he is gigging once a month or so. It is hard to tell what will happen with the pandemic in short term. As only the really big guys can be booked due to the massive gap between their shores in certain cities. How did you get to Ava White? His goal is to release on the future Sound of Egypt label, but now he is on Ava White from Black Hole Recordings. With regards to Ava White, he is really proud to have released with them and have to another release in the can for a future date later this year. He had a lot of demos turned down by a lot of other labels. You have to keep going and believing in the way you are making. He has been open to a critic though. He has learned guys like Skrillex and Bjorn Eckerson, to name a few of them, have all made time to give him feedback on productions in the past and being open to listening what guys like them have to say is really important. There is always room to improve. And that is why he, he is trying to get to his goal, future Sound of Egypt music. When he was into dance before trance was really an actual genre of its own, he always loved it. With the beat and Bud Kraftwerk, Moby and Expert were all influences when he was younger. Trance wasn't really a genre back in the early 90s, but there was a beginning so of course. And he liked stuff like Playputs and Perfecto Flurio were putting out. He always loved the melody and the beat, so the, as the genre evolved. He was never in doubt that trance would be his favorite genre. Thank you Darren O'Brien for this interview. If you would like to hear more from him, you can tune into the www.thetranstation.com or your favorite video streaming platform like VK or DLive. Thank you for listening. <laughs>